Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anne from It's a Lovely Life and if you're new here, welcome. I post videos about uh, mommy tips and tricks, any informative videos um, that I can think of about mom life and my life here in Canada. So if you want to know more about me and see more of my videos, don't forget to click that subscribe button and also push that um, bell button right there so that you get notified every time I post new videos. So today I'm bringing you seven survival tips as a one income family. So if you guys want to know more about my tips and tricks, well then let's get to the video. So the struggle of depending on one income as a family of three took its toll for almost a year now. And we have had days when we really have to be strict on our budget, then cut off look, some luxuries that we enjoy um, when both my husband and I were still working. So currently, it's just my husband that's working and I'm staying at home. So I've decided to become a stay-at-home mom for different reasons. And also, I've tried so hard to go back to work, but it just didn't seem to work out at all. And for now, let me share with you some critical survival tips as a one-income family. So number one, stick to your budget monthly or weekly. Have a specific budget and stick to it. And I mean, you can, I can just say that till I'm blue through my face and you know maybe i'm not doing it or maybe i am but um it's really crucial um we've tried di different um ways to do this we use the envelope system which i personally like um we did that when way back when we were still renting and i was still on maternity leave um far from from the envelope system it could be as simple as writing down the budget on a paper or, or sticking it to the fridge so that you can see it um, so like for us what I do is that um, sometimes when we go grocery or get gas I put it down so that we know how much we've been spending your budget means you have to really work around it around that specific budget and not spend more than that number two is buy food on sale and also make your meal plan according to those food that are on sale so this i'm really good at this one like I, I, yes. <laughs> groceries we only buy items that are on sale and which means I only plan the meals I will be making for the week by looking at what produce or meat is on sale that week. For example, don't buy ap apples if they're not on sale or if they're not in season. We also stock up on dry foods that are staple, staple dry foods or canned goods. Like whenever they go on sale, like for example, if coconut milk is on sale, then I'll get, I, I won't just get one, I'll get like two or three or four, because um, you never know when they go on sale. Lucky enough that my husband works in a grocery store, so he really knows which goods are on sale. Sometimes they bring me flyers that are, uh, or flyer that's not till like a week from now or so like he'll bring it to me and so I can plan my meals already so number three this is still this is still food related and that is to cook at home cooking at home um, rather than eating out it's not just economical in fact it's also healthier because you can control the ingredients that goes into your food so or, or into your meals and I personally like cooking anyways um, I enjoy it I just don't enjoy you know the cleaning part so. 
um, eating at home saves you from buying ridiculously priced um, takeaways and also it promotes more family intimacy during meal so like I was talking to my husband this morning about how we enjoy we really enjoy eating breakfast up like um, like let's say McDonald's or like in little restaurants but I was making um, a really big breakfast today if you buy a breakfast like a big plate of breakfast in a restaurant it costs you what like seven dollars and up so really we are saving lots by just making it at home number four buy stuff secondhand and you know what there's nothing wrong with buying stuff secondhand I love them I mean the thrift store and buy and sell sites are my go-to when it comes to buying stuff for the house, myself, my husband, and I know not everyone likes the idea of buying secondhand or already used stuff, but for me, it's a lifesaver. Like, I can buy a maternity dress or a toy at a secondhand store that costs half the price or less than it would be at a regular retail store like seriously um, so I usually buy like for example for my for my daughter I buy her books if we don't have gift cards from chapters or or the indigo store we usually I usually just buy them off of um, the Dollar Tree or secondhand stores like because I mean like for a dollar or for 99 cents even a piece for a book is a steal not only do I save money I also stop the growing fast fashion cycle or just stores or companies nowadays they nowadays they encourage you to buy more and more and more and they don't the quality of the stuff from these companies are not really re reliable as when you buy it secondhand you know that they've been already been used and so which means it shows that the quality of these products have already been tested so you know that they will last even longer <laughs> number five so consi consider free cycles or hand-me-downs as much as I love secondhand stores buying off from Facebook buy and sell sites I love me some Free this stuff. is my most favorite tip of all in fact I am proud to say that most of my daughter's clothes were given to us by family members or friends either as gifts or maybe because their daughter or daughters had outgrown them like to me buying clothes for a child can get a bit expensive just because they grow so fast which means that you constantly buy clothes or shoes for them every year or every couple of months or every season depending on the child we are blessed enough that my brother's daughter and my daughter are only about four years apart so which means I get to have um, bigger clothes ready for Eva also we have a TV unit that was given to us by Jeremy's aunt and it served as a purpose and when she she gave it to us it was so dirty it, yeah I wasn't sure at first but with a little love and lots of cleaning scrubbing it almost looked like brand new and some of our baby gears are you know were handed down to us as well and that saved us from buying um, overpriced baby gears actually number six search for free events what do I mean by that is um, search for any free events around your area that you can do um, that has activities or yeah that you can do with your family 
especially if you have little ones. Um, I have, like I said, I have a two-year-old and, she, you know, she constantly needs to just go out. And, I mean, parks and playgrounds are available, but sometimes she needs more than that, I think. Um, like, especially you see other kids as well. And doesn't mean that you're in a tight budget, that you restrict yourself from going out and having a good time. And I can still do that without spending a money, a penny, a dime, a dollar. <laughs> and here in my household, we love free events. Especially those geared towards fun activities for kids. So, like, like, you know, maybe it's a free skate at the arena that we went to. Actually, just last winter, we went to a free skate where they have free face painting and popcorn and hot chocolate or maybe a free family event um, during family day weekend. Uh, we actually went to one um, like a few months ago and they, we enjoyed the free lunch, hot dogs and drinks and chips and lots of free activities for kids like um, Bouncy Castle and my daughter even saw uh, Paw Patrol, Chase, and Poppy from Trolls. We are also lucky to have a free zoo around our area which we really enjoy because it has, it doesn't just have like the zoo part but it has a splash pad where kids can get you know, wet and um, you know, instead of a pool, it's I feel like it's more like safer. And um, they also have a playground area where kids can just you know enjoy the climbers, the slides, and the swimming. For me, you can definitely enjoy a, like family time without wrecking your your budget. And my number seven tip is. This is actually tips on saving uh, on electricity and your water bill. And we strictly follow this routine, which is we only do laundry or we start our dishwasher at seven o'clock. I've actually learned this trick from my mom. Oh so yeah, I learned this from her and she said that usually at, th at that hour between 7 p.m. So 7 a.m. It's the non-peak hours. So yeah, I guess you save um, lots if you do your dishes or if you do your laundry at the at those. So try to not use um, our lights uh, at daytime and just use you know just natural lighting. So try and turn off our TVs if we're not watching. And then turn off any radio if you're not, you know, listening. I said that I only have seven tips. I actually wrote a last tip here, which is live within your means. And this is easily said, but hard to practice. But with consistent and intentional move towards being able to survive as a one family income we were able to do this i'm not like i'm not usually high maintenance as you can see i'm very simple with like even with my makeup my clothes very simple i don't buy new makeups or new clothes even if it's on sale i don't um just because if i don't have the need for it for it then i don't buy it at all husband is the same thing he's we're actually very similar in this area we are content with basically what we have and we go by the principle that if it's not broken we don't have to really buy. is challenging to just depend on one income um, we barely could make it for the past few months here um, but with the help and support of our our family where we're able to and also you know God always provide and that's what I've been praying for so if you guys are also one income family 
let me know down in the comments below if you have any tips and tricks as well or what you guys do to survive that's all for today um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video because I sure did um, but yeah I'll see you guys in my next video bye